Sunday Sparks. Today we're going to go over Goma Kasa. I've been sitting in Goma Kasa Lakes right now. A couple of interesting parts about Goma Kasa before we start are one, it's external rotation with abduction with a B, and a lot of external rotating um, poses have abduction with a B. So straddle, where they get four fold, where to you fire lock, all of these have abduction. But Goma Kasa is pretty unique because it's abduction and external rotation. The second interesting thing is it indexes more on rotation than the strength, the lengthening of various muscles. So even if you might not be the most flexible person, you can you might be able to get into gomakasana. For example, when I was growing up in Korea, doing gomakasana arms and legs, especially arms, was considered flex. So we did it all the time. And then when I moved here, I didn't really exercise, or sorry, I didn't exercise at all. And then I started to do yoga where when I started, my fingertips barely went past my knees. And some of the instructors thought I was slacking off because I literally couldn't straighten my legs in almost all the poses. So I was that stiff, but I can still get into gomakasana legs and arms because I retained some of the mobility, as in the rotational mobility, or the external rotation mobility on my hips and my shoulders. The poses, oh, priorities are, one, external rotation and adduction, as I mentioned. Two is shoulder mobility. The top shoulder is an external rotation. The bottom shoulder, the shoulder that goes, the arm that goes behind is an internal rotation. And number three is upper back strength. The reason why is if your upper back is strong enough, when you try to grab your hands behind you, it's actually sort of flexing. So the more that it's able to open up your chest because it's stronger, the easier it is to get your hands to touch. And whenever you rotate your shoulders or rotate your arms, your shoulder blade is also moving a bit too. And so if your shoulders are really tight, but it still has some strength, you might be able to at least start to uh, touch your fingertips, then your hands, etc. Four poses, we're going to start with half gomakasana. One of your legs straight, the other one is a gomakasana leg straight, and these are stacked on top of each other. Option one is to sit up straight, then hinge with a flat back. Your hands can be off, the, off to the side, or you can introduce it behind your hand or behind your foot, or with a prop. Option two is to have your hands behind and push your chest through your arms. By having a slight arch in your back, you're able to stretch your muscles at a lengthened position, so it's a little bit more effective. You can also take gomakasana legs on your back. And this is more forgiving than when you, if you're sitting down. Because you're on your back, you don't have gravity and your own weight pushing into your knees and your joints. And you can reduce or your deepen the intensity by either pulling harder or having your shins in one line to deepen or re not really pulling as hard and having your heels towards your butt to lessen the intensity. Pose number two is either going to deer, which is 90-90 degree angles with your legs, or pinwheel, which I personally like better, where the top shin is parallel and the back shin is parallel to the side, or the top shin is parallel to the top. The shin that's parallel to the top is an external rotation. So a couple things you can do is one, you can just lift your knee. You can place your hand on your knee and try to lift your knee and resist the force. The pressure from your hand will help engage and strengthen your muscles more. The third option is just lifting the whole leg. And the fourth option is hinging in front of, on top of the leg that's in external rotation to help stretch out the muscles. The third drill is on your belly. You're sort of taking a locust, but not really. Your legs are glued onto the mat, so you can uh, focus more on your upper back. And with your arms, you are rotating while pulling your, while uh, flipping your hands so your backside is on your back. So on your inhale, lift your upper body with your thumbs facing towards the sky. 
So it's actually bending your elbow. You're also flipping your thumb so it's facing the floor. Then you place the back side of your hands on your back and you reverse and bring your hands back to the front. You can also use this with a block and that will increase the intensity because your, the block is going to be heavy so your muscles are going to be working harder. In terms of gomakasana, your knees are stacked on top of each other in front of your midline. Your shins can be in one line to intensify or your heels can be towards your side to reduce the intensity. In terms of your arms, whatever leg that is on top is the arm that's on top. You first grab your bottom arm and bend your elbow and try to wiggle your hand as close to, or as high as you can in the midline. Then you reach and grab your hand from behind and free your neck. Your head should be free because your chest is, should be open. You can also get a towel with this hand and grab it and like work your way closer. Or another option is usually internal uh, rotation from your shoulders is generally the weaker one for a lot of people. So you can keep the internal rotation here and you grab your hand from the side with your right hand. Oh like this. So that at least you're getting half of the gomakasana arm stretch. And then once it's a little bit more mobile, you can grab it up from up above as a modification. Then if you have your hands and your knees stacked and your everything is in one line, your knees, your chest, your hips, on an inhale, you sit up straight, and on the exhale, you hinge forward. It's not really a rounding. You want to try to have your back sort of flat, which is why your head should be free. If you don't have the mobility and you're like crunching here, like you're not, uh, you're going to be rounding instead of hinging, if that makes sense. One of my tips, just in general, for hip mobility, or especially external external hip mobility is literally just sit on the floor. I sit on the floor a lot because I just find it to be a lot more comfortable and I fidget a lot because I've aged. So you can just sit on the floor or you can get a yoga block and every single time you fidget, you're actually working on your hip mobility. But, sorry, side note. Anywho, the parties for Gomakasana are one, external rotation and adduction for your hips, two, shoulder mobility, external rotation from the top, and internal rotation from the bottom, and three, upper, upper back strength to help you open up your chest, but also to get, which also helps you get your hands closer together. And it's also needed because whenever you rotate your arms, you are actually sort of uh, moving your shoulder blades. And that's it for Gomakasana. Thank you for watching.